I've been having a lot of fun with the Crates Height Relight plugin, and I'm going to show you what I did to create this effect here. So let's begin by creating a new black solid and naming it background. Next, we can add a classic turbulent noise effect, and I'll click on the stopwatch so that I keyframe the evolution to be something different a few seconds later. Now let's make it a bit bigger by increasing the scale. Additionally, I can also reduce the complexity to create these very smooth hills. Next, I will be adding a posterize effect, which is really cool because it turns it into this staircase pattern, similar to those maps with the contour lines. Now this is where it starts to get really cool. I'm going to be creating an adjustment layer and I will be adding crates height relight, which is included in the LaForge suite. But Whoa, okay, yeah, this is beautiful. It's like an instant 3D shading effect and you can drag these lights around and if you want it to be slightly faster, you can enable the fast preview. And of course, since we animated the noise, everything moves already and it looks beautiful. It's, it's perfect already. The plugin also has a few presets included so you can get a very good looking starting point. I love the paper one because it looks very clean and modern and so it's, a, it's like a blank slate. Crates Height Relight is a pro plugin, but you can access a watermarked trial on the Production Crate website. We have a bunch of free plugins too, so yeah, feel free to check them out. Throw an image in the center of your composition and change one of the lights to match its position and color. We're going to use this a few times, so pre-compose it and name it Graphics. Using Shift D, duplicate the layer and set the top one's blending mode to screen. This makes it slightly more glowy, but we'll improve it later on. Now let's create a new adjustment layer. We're going to place this below the graphics. Since the logo is kind of hard to read, we're going to create a rectangular mask behind it. Using the adjustment layer, let's add a curves effect to it to darken the region behind the logo. And now it's so much more readable, much better. I'm a big fan of glass morphism, so I'm going to be adding a blur as well so that we kind of create this frosted glass effect. Now let's make the logo actually interact with the background. I'm going to create a new solid layer and I'll name it Graphics Mask. Next, I will be adding a set matte effect and I'll set the layer that it references to the background. Make sure to enable the effects and masks as well. And I'm changing alpha to luminance. What this does is convert the alpha channel of the layer to the brightness of the background. Now we have to convert this to a solid mask, so I'm going to be adding a levels effect and changing it to alpha mode. Next, I'm going to constrain the white and the black point until we get this very crisp hard edge on the boundary of where we want the logo to interact. So now let's select the layers that are going to be hidden where this mask is and use the pick whip to apply it as a track mat. Now, of course, we do have to invert it, but now it's looking really cool. It's like the logo is embedded inside this 3D warping shape. Now I'm doing some freestyle to the color and intensity of the lights, but art is subjective, so just do whatever looks good to you. Now let's work on the glowing intersection line. We can begin by duplicating the graphics layer and bringing that to the top. Next, let's rename it to Intersection to make it a bit easier. Let's remove the track mat and actually replace it with a set mat effect. Set it to reference the graphics mask and enable the effects and masks again. This basically shows us any area that is currently hidden by the foreground. So from here, let's add a cheeky fast blare effect and give it a value of maybe two or three. Now let's add a curves effect and we're going to set the channel mode to alpha. Let's bring the last control point all the way to the bottom and bring up the middle. And you can see now we're kind of isolating the boundary. It's really cool. Now let's duplicate the set matte effect and bring it to the bottom and invert it. Let's get rid of this pixelation by adding a very subtle blur. The value only needs to be 0.1. 
Let's leave isolation mode and now you can see it's beautifully blended on top of our animation. Now let's add a glow. You can use the one built into After Effects, but if I'm honest, I think it looks kind of tacky. But once again, Production Create comes to the rescue. We're going to be using what I think is the best glow plugin. Let's begin with a solid composite effect and slap that onto the intersection layer. Set the color to black and then let's add the Production Create Easy Glow effect, which is included in the LaForge suite. Increase the intensity and adjust the tone map gamma to get a more desaturated glow. But don't be afraid to get creative. You can add a hue and saturation effect to change the color of the glow. This stuff is always fun to mess with, so feel free to go crazy. To add on to that, remember that everything here is procedural, so you can actually change the background texture to anything you want really, and you get these incredible patterns and I feel like we're just scratching the surface here. Now I'm going to be animating the brightness of the noise layer, and what's cool about this is that if it gets darker, it reveals the logo inside its shape, which is really cool. Another tip is to add a fast box blur to really smooth out the shape a bit more. I love the way that it almost makes it look like rings in a tree and it's just really clean. If you're feeling trendy, you can add a posterized time effect which reduces the frame rate of your layer and creates this awesome motion graphic-y look. And of course you can add a vignette with a black solid that's feathered thoroughly. And I'm just going to add a layer of chromatic aberration, which is actually a free plugin in the LaForge suite. So yeah, check that out. That wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching and remember to check out the Crates Height Relight plugin. It's part of the LaForge suite, which includes over 20 incredible plugins, all under the Production Crate Pro membership. If you need any help, feel free to join the Production Crate Discord down below. Thanks again and bye bye.